Right, hello everybody, English Woodsman here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. More so, thank you very much for clicking on my video. So, today we're going to be hiking back up to Studley Pike, just up there. We camped there a couple of weeks ago, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to drop down into some woodland near one of the dams. The class is the highest beaches in Britain, and we're going to hopefully find the dark forest and do a little bit, bit of camping in there. So, we do have to start moving. So let's get walking and on the way up, bring you back and show you bits of that's what I'm uh, experiencing and you can see what I see as well. Absolutely beautiful. Vegan Dan's there, recording as he's walking. I really struggle to do that. Yeah, that's where we need to be. <laughs> <laughs> we really haven't walked far and already <laughs> oh. Nice and steady yeah Take us time, no need to rush We've got all night <laughs> Honestly I can't believe it Hardly an incline <laughs> Incline oh, Whatever you call it oh. But yeah that is beautiful Look at all that. Absolute stunning. What a view. Head not short guy in camera. He's just messing around. <laughs> right, see you in a minute. Studley Pike in better view now. If we go up this way from here, and just make us way up, it's a lot shorter because if you go over that way, it's in uh, actually, I think it's all the way over there where the highest beach in Britain is. There's the pub where you can park where we parked last time. Try get down here a little bit. It's a little bit better here. Whoa! Last time we came here, it wasn't this window. I have never witnessed wind like that before. It actually hurts your face as it's blowing. Now I don't know how it sounds on camera. You know, obviously, wind noise is really bad sometimes. But when I come to have a look at it, we'll work some of that out. Right, let's get back down at floor level and then uh, go find somewhere to camp. But I really do need a cup of coffee now. <laughs> back out to wind. So just stop to pick up some water. Many people on previous video when I've been up here says this water is safe to drink, as it is, but I want to be a little bit more careful than that. So I brought myself this survival filter pump. What we need to do is we need to put this end in the water. I didn't want to sink too well that. That's supposed to act like a weight, but it ain't doing. You can get yourself a bottle. Put the other end inside it. I've got your position right, you should better see what I'm doing. I'm not happy about that. You'd think that would keep it down water a bit better, wouldn't you? 
Anyway. Damn, he's better keep that in water like that. Yeah. It's just, just thinking that it don't, it don't seem heavy enough, does no. it? No. Not enough. Out the weight on that. As I do that now, it's actually coming through and filling my bag up with some clean water. Like I say, some of the people say it's good enough to drink, but I want to make sure. There we go, 700 ml of water, straight off. Doing this has definitely kept me from having to carry the water all the way up the hill. Right, I'll fill another one up and then we'll be on his way. Right, so we're at the woods where we need to be. Well, we don't really need to be anywhere because we camp anywhere we want from this point onwards now, but yeah. It's still very windy, not as bad as earlier. So I really don't want to be sleeping inside these woods. So we are going to have to look for a spot just on edge or maybe a little bit away from them. Because there's a hell of a lot of trees down in here. So many trees down. This is not probably the best place to camp when it's windy. That is something we will not be doing. Oh, ah, they fell over then. Holes in ground. Ah, hip, hip joint. Give me a new hip operation, Dan. Ah, really hurt my hip that day. Quite nice inside, it's just with the old red wind in the trees. I really won't like to sleep in here. Put more trees down. Wonder if these came down in the storm, what we had a couple of months ago. opening over here the green grass well I wouldn't know why anybody would call this the dark forest. I get it if it were, you know, middle at night, no, you know, moonlight coming in, then it would be dark. But the way they're explaining it to me, I thought it was that, you know, thick with the trees and everything, but no light got in at all. Anyway, I wasn't going to go straight forward. Where does this thing it were? It's, uh, well, I think there's about one, two, probably three trees come down together. So that's definitely blocking the path all the way over there. So we best, if we can, walk this way and see if we can walk around the tree. What an exciting day exploring this woodland. Quite exciting, really. Another two trees there, three trees there. If all this happened in that storm what we had, wow, I wouldn't mind it being here. Not to camp, just to witness the noise of it all.
more trees. There's so many trees down in here, it's unbelievable. Look at that one. You know, it'd make an awesome place to camp in here. But I would be paranoid about the trees coming down. And I think you'd be the same, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's just not really worth it. We're about four miles away from the car. So if all goes wrong, you know, that'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? So we're not going to put his life at risk. It's not worth it. Well, there. Uh, I can see a uh, dam over there, so we'll make his way to the dam and see what it's like for camping over that side. Sink here. I'm glad that wind's dying down a little bit. Dan's happily stuck in between oh. the post and the. <laughs> the <laughs> This is a uh, hiking sticks got caught in between. <laughs> Thanks for that, Daniel. <laughs> no worries, let's shut it. No, it's sheep getting out. That's broke, oh, there we go. Right, let's keep on tracking. Man, I got up there to go now. You know, we have been everywhere trying to find a decent place to camp away from the trees and it is like virtually impossible we were going to camp down the water but and then uh all the midges was too much so we decided to move on we've been walking now for an hour in the woods all there is in the woods it's just like tracks you know where they must have been harvesting the trees and digging all the ground up but everywhere we go there's just no suitable places for a tent and the woods actually echoing and that is quite weird but yeah all this here all this green it's just not suitable to camp on it's too it's too hilly and now we're struggling for somewhere to camp and that might sound stupid but it's just no suitable place and I could do with a drink I'm tired <laughs> I'm starting to get more on you <laughs> I really am well, after about an hour or two maybe, searching for somewhere decent to camp, I've come across this nice little spot behind a wall. And you know what, I don't normally do this on videos, 
but I just had to have a drink. <laughs> I swear to God, the amount of hiking we've done. If anybody thinks they can come up here in tent camp in the woodlands, they're so wrong. The, you might get away with a hammock. The woodland is just that condensed, you know, so close together. And then every, it looks about every five feet, five to six feet, there's like tracks going through the woods. So you've got no chance of putting even a tent up there. And then when you walk around the sides of the woods, it's so bumpy, boggy, it's, it's just bad. You know, I don't think me and Dan expect it to be that bad. And down in the water, all the little mosquitoes and flies were just horrendous. So we finally found a little spot now anyway, so that's a good thing. We're sort of like having a rest. I'm having a, like I say, a drink. If you're a long time subscriber to my channel, you'll know it's not very often you see me having a drink on camera. But this one, it were needed, honestly. Oh. I watch other people's channels and when they say this drink's needed, I'm like, I don't ever get like that. You know, you feel like you really need a drink. But after that, <laughs> I needed it, honestly. So I get what people mean now. Oh. Right, I'm gonna get my scent. There, scent. I'm gonna get my scent. I've only had a, a small can, I'm talking rubbish already. I'm gonna get my tent set up. <laughs> so if you subscribed to my channel a few days ago, I did a video about this free FUL lightweight tent. Like I said, in that video we're gonna be using it this weekend. So we're gonna get this set up. If you've not yet seen the video, it's one video below this. I do a little uh, sort of like unboxing review thing of it. So I am now looking forward to using it tonight in the wind as well. It's not as windy as it was when we first got here, but the wind is still around. Right, so my free FUL gear tent. There's a video below if you haven't seen it yet. My OEX 600 sleeping bag with the liner. You'll see this on my channel a lot. And my, I forgot what company this is now, Trekology. Yeah, uh, inflatable ultralight air puller, and then I've got my uni gear air mat here, perfect for size sleepers. There's a video a couple of down from this one if you want to see this. So, yeah, that's myself for tonight. I've got all the other bits that I need here head torch, battery pack, this uh, lead here goes all the way up to my light at the top. These are the water bottles, what you saw me use earlier. So I might have to go back to that uh, water place. So do you remember me, I think about a week or two ago, I did a video on a British Army ration pack. Well, I've got some of their food out tonight. So I've got an orange flavored cake. So I won't be having that later on. A nice hot chocolate drink for bedtime. Some mixed fruit, just a quick snack maybe. And I've got beef, some style filled with rice. Now if you subscribe to my channel, you know I'm dyslexic, so if I can't read so I'm not gonna sit here and try to read it, I'm just gonna show you and you can read it yourself. And then I've got spicy sausage with potato wedges. That sounds really nice. And I'm sure there's another one. All day breakfast. <laughs> that is some morning time, 100%. Yeah, if you haven't seen the video, it's a couple of videos down from this one. You can check it out. Uh, you see the full ration pack, you see everything that you get in it. Basically, I've just brought out a couple of meals tonight. Because I will need to eat probably two of them to fill me for most at night. And I can just snack away at the rest of it. Now, yeah, you are inside my tent, as small as it is. The wind seems to be picking up again, so I don't really want to be. I'm going to catch the camera or try to overspeak the wind. I'm going to get this going. My stove, and then uh, we'll get some dinner done.
I probably never had to filter that water to be truthful. So all I'm doing is boiling my meals up. Yeah. So I don't know why I did it. Yeah, it did actually, did it? For, just, just, just to show the pump off, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I had no reason to uh, do that with water. You got to show that pump off. Got to show the pump off. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know what? It's just these things that I do, people. Quick view from the tent. That's my view for tonight. I'm a little bit devastated, but them woodlands aren't really decent for putting a tent up in. But I've already explained what the ground's like. Big deep tracks in it. Five, six foot of spaces apart. Just no good really. Let's my first course of my dinners boiling. It's almost ready, I think. You can definitely start to see the sunset against the trees. And halfway through the field. Wow, that is quite magical, really. And there is the sunset. Now using these one man tents are absolutely fantastic, but lightweight. But <laughs> try to do stuff in them. Wind or rain, you know, it's, it, the wind's not as bad as it was when we first came, but it still has its gusts. So it's like quite a pain to be truthful with you. Anyway, spicy sausage and wedges. Don't look too bad. Hmm. Mm. Now when I put the spoon in, my body went, it's about bloody time. <laughs> now my taste would just went, Tch. I scared my life. <laughs> I ain't eaten up for about four hours. I tell a lie, it's going to be about five and a half hours. This is amazing. Mm. Oh yeah. A little bit of spiciness. It's not that bad really. I'm really good about them woods. I keep looking at them. Right, so I finished that spicy sausage and wedges. That didn't fill me up at all. So I'm going to have to have the other one. Get this in the pond. pond. Get this in the pond, people. Get this in the boiler. And let's get it warmed up. And let's see this one. Alright, so my second course. That's got a little bit of spice to it. Spice mince with beef and black beans, rice and red kidney beans. That's got a bit of a kick to it. Woo! A little bit spicy that. I think my normal subscribers, people who are following me, they know I can't cope with uh, way too much spice. 
I didn't think this was going to be as spicy. But you know what? You live and learn, and you learn for next time, don't you? But I'm still going to eat it because I'm, I'm absolutely starving. It's like I can't get enough food. Yeah, pretty normal. You know, I wish sometimes when you're recording, or when you're doing stuff like this, but you could show every single thing that you do when you're out. Because if we recorded every single thing, you would have laughed your head off. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Even Dan agrees with me. <laughs> because... <laughs> We were just going through fields and it were like dipping down at big dips and then we were like uh, putting his foot into like, oh, you know, like pockets of water and stuff and we were falling over. It's quite funny at start and as you know, it started going on, it were like, this is really starting to annoy us. But when you take these shortcuts, that's what happens. <laughs> and now when it's someone saying, stick to track, where's a sense of adventure? You know what I mean? It's got to enjoy yourself. It's got to enjoy your life, people. If you don't do this and you're thinking about doing it, get out, get it done now. Summer's here. Go to like, I know camping in your local woodlands not probably the best thing to do, but try get on a campsite. Just give it a try, and then just try adventure a little bit. Buy a little bit of equipment. Don't buy too much, just in case you don't like it. Oh, just get out. Give it a go. Just be sensible. Know a little bit about it. When I first started camping, I knew not about camping. And I think sometimes I still don't know everything because I'll never know everything. And you know why that is? Because when I learn something, I just I forget it. And I have to be learning it about four or five times before I do know. And then if I don't use it over a length of time, I just forget it again. So it's like, I just don't remember anything. But I've definitely learned the most important things about camping is, you know, your tents, what season tents you use, what season sleeping bags you use, your air mats, clothing and stuff. I've, I reckon that is probably, excuse me, the most important thing is your equipment, knowing your equipment. That's why I always say, you know, when you get your equipment, just garden testing, camping your garden with it because if you're using a sleeping bag and it's near enough winter time and you're cold, you can just zip that tent up and go back indoors, can't you? You know what I mean? If you're out here now like me and Danny's and we find out something's not right for us and we didn't test it and it's going to be a cold night, we're going to be basically putting ourselves in danger. <laughs> and that is, it's the truth, it does happen. So whatever you get, test it in your garden. If you get a tent and it says waterproof to 5,000 hydrostatic head, stick it in your garden, door sit down with hose pipe for about 10, 20 minutes. I've done it with every one of my tents. And then I know that tent leaks, I'm not taking that one. Well, you know what? There'll be somebody who totally disagrees with that. I swear, guys, look through comments. There'll be somebody who totally disagrees with everything I just said. The one person who said over there, I think I, it was when I reviewed this tent, and he says, uh, research, research, research. And I'm like, I, I don't, I, di I didn't get what he meant. And Daz, who comes camping now and again, Gaz, sorry. Was it Gaz or Daz? Gaz. Gaz, yeah, sorry, Gaz. Anyway, Gaz, even he commented on it saying, oh, you know, what research are you suggesting we do? And he ran about, when you buy a tent, read, you know, do all your research, check it out, see what other people are saying. But if you're into this sort of camping stuff yourself, you can go onto Facebook groups, you can read the reviews on equipment, and nine times out of ten, it'll be roughly about a 50 50. 50% 50 of people like it, 50% will dislike it, unless it's a really bad tent or a piece of equipment. And then, you know, you if it's like a lot of people saying it's really bad, giving it one star and stuff then you know, stay away from it. But tents and other bits of equipment, you'll always guarantee there'll always be like a 50-50 split. And that, you know, that's the way it's gonna be. 
So doing research on some things is really hard work. Like look at the new Tesla cars. Some people like them, some people don't like them. You see my, see my point there? It's, you just can't research everything because you just get a mixed, mixed bag of information. And you know what the best thing about Tesla cars is? It pays people to drive up and down the country in them. That's their job. Drive up and down the country day in day out just to have their car on the motorway so people see it. And that is no lie. And it pays good wages to do that. My application form's in now. <laughs> We're apply for a job. Yes, when you see someone in one of them Tesla cars, don't think it's theirs. It could be a chance, but it could all be, you know, belong to Tesla and he's just driving up and down country for a bit of publicity. You know, for a bit of free advertisement, let's say. But that is what happens, and most car companies do that, and I never knew that. Anyway, I enjoyed this one. The start was a little bit spicy, but I think we've been chatting away for seven and a half minutes. It's really took my mind off it. I'll bring you back in a bit. It's uh, half past ten. I'm all tucked up. And my light's just gone out. I think that light outside there, it's Dan's. Yeah, we're all tucked up now. Yeah, when, you know, the weather is rather windy or it's raining, you just can't do much. Especially when I'm in this one-man tent, it's just ridiculous. I'm going to be serious, I'm not enjoying it. I don't, I don't like not having the room to move. To get my sleeping bag all right. See, the wind's picking up a bit now again, but I just, I'm just not enjoying it in this tent. I'm not going to lie and say it's the best tent on the market when it isn't, because Vegan Dan just said to me, any other tent, what would you pick? I had a thought about it, I said some other tents, but and I said, you know what, my OEX Fox 2, that would be the tent, I could swap for this right now, that would be the tent. I'm just not happy in this one, you know, I thought, get out, give it a try. Live and learn, that's all I say. I don't know why I'm not enjoying it. I do, actually, it's because of the room. You know, I need to take my coat off, but <laughs> I just can't be bothered. I know it's going to be such a flipping mess around and stuff. I just really can't be bothered. I just sleep like this. <laughs> well, good morning, people. Six o'clock in the morning, and I thought I could hear some of, you know, moving around my tent. Well, good morning, people. I've woke up a bit better now. Just uh, put some water on for my all-day breakfast. And, uh, I'm slightly happier with the tent than I was last night because there's no condensation. I think that's helped with the amount of wind that we've had. So that's uh, probably a bonus. Mulch dripping wet through and stuff. I think if it was still night, I mean, that might have been a little bit different. Yeah, I've got some, uh, that's not gonna do it, is it? There we go. Some water on boil. Yeah, I'll use this tent a couple of more times. I can't judge it off its first time, really, can I? You know what I wish to do? I wish to just make a pole 
you know, fits that perfect. You know, like a normal tent pole, but a bit thicker. That's what I wish to do instead of using hiking sticks. I know that's why the tent is lightweight, but I'm sure they could come out with something like that instead of using these hiking poles. Because through the night I was just bothered about, you know, slipping down. So two, three times, I think about three times actually, I got up and stretched it out a little bit more. All sheep have gone. I've, uh, I sort of scared them when I got up to the toilet. Dan's awake. Morning, Dan. Morning. It's unusual for him to be awake at this time in the morning. <laughs> I looked back over the footage last night and some parts it were way too windy. It just made the audio sound ridiculous. So most of the wind weren't really bad at taking out anyway. I watched other people's videos as well and one thing I can't stand too much is when it's really, really windy and they'll just keep recording and try to talk. I can't watch videos like myself so if I can't watch it, I wouldn't really expect somebody else to do so. I think I lost about 10 minutes footage of the video just on that part alone. Honestly, it was just horrendous. No point making videos and putting all the time and effort into it. If then, you know, all you were is like, you know, instead of me trying to talk, it'd just be pointless, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, mate. I'll... Alright, thank you. So this meal here says it's an all day breakfast. I'll just have another look at it then. Beans, pork sausage. I'll open a bit of bacon. 5% bacon. 8% egg. I don't know. I always expect too much from these sort of meals myself. Well, there's something. I think that's like the egg. You know what, it's still nice to have something nice and warm in the morning. Even if it is 99% beans. <laughs> See, that's why I run about when I looked at that ration pack, you know, not wasting them, just opening them up and having a little bit out of it and going, oh, that's all right. That's why if I do get them, and I bring them to the channel and show you what's inside them. And then when we're out camping, we can use them then. Little party sausages then. Oh, I missed my mouth. <laughs> so just before we start packing up, we have a nice coffee. I was that tired yesterday from all that walking around. We did miles yesterday, honestly. I just uh, fell asleep. <laughs> I, just, I didn't even take my coat off. I've just slept in all this. Now I'm gonna ask you a question here, and be honest. You, know, you get your goody two shoe people here, what I say no. When you go to oh, McDonald's, you take a few extra sugars. And a couple of extra milks. Oh, you know what? They're pretty good to have for camping then. 
like that. I'll get a couple. Alright, I'll be honest, there's a couple more down here. A few more sugars. <laughs> Some of the stirrers, you know, you stir your coffee with. I snapped them in half so they fit in the cup perfect. <laughs> Can't be honest. <laughs> Everyone's done it, I don't care what they say. Right, so that's us done now. Packed up, ready to go home. We're a windy camp, no doubt about that. Vegan boy there, ready to go. I'll leave a link in the description to his YouTube channel if you've not yet been over. You can go see his uh, version of the camp version. Yeah, I think I'm saying that right, maybe so. Yeah, so we're going to head back to that car now. Once we get down to the car, it's been a 10 mile hike through last night and this morning, so that's probably the longest I've done so far. If you're interested in seeing more and you're not yet following my channel, I can move this right. If you're Wackless here, you better subscribe to my channel. How do I do it? Right, there we go. And then up here, I'll let YouTube suggest something to you. But for now, thanks for watching. It's been a good night. Thanks for watching.